you can use Visual Basic to filter dates in an access database. I'm working with a very simple database. It has only two tables. Employees have timesheets. So one employee ID has many employee IDs on the second table for the timesheets. So I have created a main form that has information about the employees from the table employees and a subform that shows the timesheets from the table timesheets but for that specific employee that we are looking at. And then we are going to create a filter later on to get only the timesheets for this year, this quarter, this month or this week. The subform is based on a record source that is in a query, the timesheet subform query. That query uses both tables and has as the first field employee ID always on the many side, the employee ID from the table timesheet. And then the week date from table timesheets, the work hours, actual rate, the vacation hours, and then it does a few calculations to find the regular pay, the extra pay, and the total pay. The connection between the main form and the subform through this window is the employee ID from the master fields, the main form, and the employee ID of the child fields, the subform. On the main form, we insert through design an option group. The option group has in this case five different options. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The option group itself is the main entry. It's called GRP choice. And by default, number one, all years, is the default value, unless someone clicks on this year, this quarter, etc. In the after update event of this option group, we use an event procedure, which is a VBA routine. So that is the subroutine group choice underscore after update and sub. We declare a variable of the date type, the date. We do a select case statement for the value of group choice. If the value is one, we want all the years, two, we want this year only, etc. We close the select case statement with an end select statement. Case one is D date equals, let's say, the beginning of the previous century or whatever is the first date in your database. Case two is the beginning of this year, one slash, one slash, and then the function year on today's date. Case three is going to select the correct start of four quarters. I will skip that for a moment. Case four is for the beginning of this month. So we need the month function applied to, the, to today's date. Hook onto it slash one slash, that's the beginning of the month, and hook onto it today's year. And case five looks a little more complicated. It is going today's going to take today's date, subtracts from it the weekday of today's date. Sunday would be one, Monday would be two. So we subtract from, from the date two and add two again to get the beginning of this week. If weekday were three, today's date minus three plus two, that is one. So case three is another select case statement. Based on the month of today's date, if it's August, then we want to select the case August. Case one, two, three is January through March, one slash one slash year date, that's the beginning of the first quarter. 
the beginning of the second quarter is four slash one slash the year of today's date. The beginning of the third quarter and the beginning of the last fourth quarter. After the select case statements, we need more to be done. This is what we had already abbreviated. And we are going to say to the form that this code is in, that is me, give me from that main form the timesheets subform. The timesheet subform includes the form and the VBA code. We don't want the VBA code, we want just dot form. And from the form part of timesheet subform, we want the filter to be set to the following string. The field week date, that is how I call that field in the database, has to be greater than or equal to whatever the date is that you have chosen in the option group. However, make sure that the date is inserted inside pound signs. You probably know that when you make queries and you do a filter for dates, it will automatically insert those pound signs. That forces this date into a real access date. And you do that with pound signs. Then we say to the form of the timesheet subform object that we want the filter to be turned on. We don't want the filter on if the user has chosen all years. So if D date happens to be 1 slash 1 1900 or whatever your start date was, then we are going to say to the subforms form object filter on equals false. That is what I put in there and we are going to test it. Here are the two tables. Here is the query. We are going to open the form main employees. I happen to be in the record of the first employee. These are the timesheet for that employee. I put in there a timesheet for this week, this month, this quarter, this year, and those were previous years. So at the moment I click on this year, it will filter the subform only for 2013 timesheet. This quarter, only July and August. This month, only August. I happen to do this in August. And I happen to do that in the week, the first Monday that the date 8.28 is in. That's the day I happen to do this. And the date function will always find today's date. You want to know much more about VBA? I developed a CD-ROM for you, Access 2007 VBA made accessible. That also works for 2000. 10 and 2013. It has a very rich content. It has three parts. Every part has more than 500 slides. So in total you have 1500 slides. In part one, these are the subjects we discuss. In part two, we have another set of issues. And in part three, the more advanced issues. I think that most of your questions about access databases will be answered in one of these parts. So I think this is a very rich source to help you not only to get started, but to do very advanced work in your own database with VBA. Where can you find that CD-ROM? MrExcel.com, Amazon.com, GenesisPC.com. If you go to Amazon.com, you probably have to type my name, Gerard Verschuren, and you will find all the CD-ROMs and books I developed for you on these issues. I wish you good luck.